So, Natasha, uh, you've been a model and actress, uh, you know, seven, like seven different languages. So you're a very intelligent woman, uh, obviously, but when you, uh, when you've seen some of the things that are part of this, as we call family rights or family uh, or children's rights community, uh, so to speak, and working with like Connie regularly out there with the family uh, for project. Um, what attracted you to get involved and take a stand for families? Well, unfortunately, I was a victim as well. Um, I never knew this problem existed and that it was nationwide and uh, that it was so pre prevalent in today's society. Um, I was a victim of the family court here in one of the richest counties in Tennessee, Williamson County. And um, I started as a... Um, I had a hearing for a custody determination and for a parental uh, plan to be established. And that's all I thought I was going in for. But um, I got a really um, um, unconstitutional judge and um, who was very in inappropriate. She's guilty of a lot of the judicial misconduct. Um, she, she, uh, was a bully and abused her power and authority. So, um, I got through my case and, um, even though I, my final parenting plan, uh, was ultimately established, um, over a year ago, um, I was very, very upset through all of the emotional, financial, and, um, everything that the legal system does to drain everything out of you. And uh, mm -hmm. I could have walked away and just um, ended it there and just put it in the category of a really bad dream and that I survived it and I could move on. However, uh, when I started some more research on this particular judge, um, and I'm going to tell her name, it's uh, Judge Sharon Guffey, she is the only juvenile court judge in Williamson County um, in um, Franklin here. So you have no other choice. Um, so when, when I learned about how I was treated and then I learned about other people that were treated uh, worse in her courtroom, that really touched my heart and it, it somehow motivated me when I heard these hor horrific stories that I knew that I had to get involved and I had to stand up and it was my duty. And, um, you know, in Dante's Inferno, they say the hottest place in hell is reserved for those who in time of need do nothing. And uh -huh. uh, I felt right. I'm a very, very courageous person. I don't have a problem public speaking and, um, and I thought, well, God put me in this position uh, because he knows I'm not afraid. I have courage, uh, and I'm not afraid to speak up. So uh, because of these other stories that I heard and the pattern shown by this same judge of so many um, just hor horrific things that she has done to families and children that I knew that I had to do something about it. So... Uh, thank God I got in touch with Connie regularly, um, uh -huh. and then um, I just learned so much more um, through her Family Forward project and how much more than I even imagined that the government is corrupt in, in taking children away from their parents and um, without any cause really for um not, uh, do you know that 85% of the, the removal of children is, is not due to abuse, but for neglect? Mm -hmm. So um, when I learned a lot about the, the mission statement of the Family Forward Project and what Connie uh, states, she's done a numerous research, and she's just an, an awesome advocate for this whole system. Um, mm -hmm. And I learned that these agencies, from CASA to uh, Guardian Ad Litem to um, judges to, I mean, you name it, whoever's involved in the system, 
gets paid for every child going into foster care because of this um, Title IV funding that's uh, exactly. federal, federally funded. So I, I'm just appalled. And then I, when I joined the Family Forward Project and I saw so many people, mothers and fathers, just hurting for, and their children screaming to get back to their parents and their their relatives are trying to get uh, custody of them and the government not allowing them uh, and even killing babies in uh, in the for medical um, neglect, like killing them in the hospitals. Yes. And when I saw all the corruption, I said, uh-uh, this, I, I'm going to talk about it and I'm going to start with one judge and then I'm going to move mm-hmm. down and reform just the judicial mm-hmm. disciplinary committee. Uh, mm-hmm. And then I'm going to go further, you know, and I can be a great example of uh, bringing attention to one judge because this one judge can hurt other people and I'm going to focus Absolutely. all my attention on her. And when I'm, when I'm done with that, then I'm going to go for the judicial disciplinary committee and reform them because well, when you complain uh, about a judge to your judicial disciplinary committees, which I have, um, mm-hmm. what they say is, well, didn't you appeal? Uh, you know, why didn't you appeal? We can't do anything about it. We're not the law. Mm-hmm. And, 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 and I'm trying to, I told him, actually, it's uh, the, the Tennessee Judicial um, uh, Disciplinary Chairman is a former mm-hmm. judge or maybe a present judge named Chris Kraft. So when yes. I told him about this issue that I had with Judge Sharon Guffey, he said, uh, well, you should have appealed, as though the case was closed, like he didn't even want to listen to me. And right, um, right. I told him, do you know how many families don't have money to appeal? Like, mm-hmm. that's, that's, that's an, like, you know, 20000 to $60,000 for an appeal. And, and you might have a chance, too, you might. But what, what he was saying um, at the ju- legislature committee in Nashville, which I attended, um, mm-hmm. they had a sunsetting meeting, which is they were having a meeting about trying to get rid of or do away with the judicial disciplinary committee. And I was there speaking against it. I, was, I wanted it to go away, to reform, because right. judges, judging other judges doesn't work. I mean, they're all exactly. buddies, and they think they think they're just much more, much smarter than your average victim of court. Um, mm-hmm. And and uh, when I told him, look, people don't have money to appeal. You know, is that the only way you're going to listen? He goes, well, we don't do the law. But it, as a matter of fact, he's wrong because when a judge doesn't follow the law, then that's a form of misconduct. So instead right. of mm-hmm calling me up, contacting me, and giving me information to hear a statement from me, to at least take 15 minutes for me to present my case against Judge Guffey. He um, didn't do that, but somehow Judge Sharon Guffey heard that I was at the legislature um, talking about her and using Uh her name, and then she went after uh, and filed a complaint against Connie regularly saying in the letter that I was acting as her agent, quote unquote. Wow. Um, Yeah. And that's just evidence that she is definitely hiding something. I mean, um, and I'm sure that Judge um, Chris Kraft contacted her and said, hey, they were talking about you because who else would have, you know, she wasn't there. Mm -hmm. So um, yeah, that's, anyway, that, that's, correct. That, that's what um, you know, I'm doing. I, and I thought I'm going to start with one judge and then hopefully it'll have the domino effect and maybe God just put me in this position to do something. So here I am. Well, <laughs> well Natasha, uh, the Budvino again, I applaud you. And Jay and I say a lot too, and, and we always say go with your heart. And we, when we do certain things, it's because we're compelled to do it. And you're not only very intelligent, but you're also a pragmatist. Uh, and, and, I, I, and you're a very uh, 
self-confident woman, and I love to see that uh, because I like to see warriors that I, I know are going to conquer. Uh, you're a great voice, a loud one, but a, but a one that's uh, intelligent and, and needs to be heard. Thank you. Amazing. Well, thank that. you for that, but I'll, I'll tell you, I, I had a lot of confidence. I was very successful um, on my previous endeavors. However, going through this system, it tore me apart, and I have yes. lost my confidence. I mean, uh, it, it just eats away at the strongest people. If you have yes. any energy and uh, a good frame of mind and a great attitude, which I had all of that, it just pushed me down to the ground. Like, I thought the weight of the world, like, I, I couldn't get out of this hole. And... Um, Somehow I managed to get out of it. Now that I'm out of it, I'm going to climb that mountain and shout. <laughs> well, that's, yeah. it's, it's funny that you say those things, Natasha, and because Jay, if anyone, uh, knows, it, it's just one day. I, I guess you, I call it sick and tired of being sick and tired. You know, and, just, uh -huh. it just, and also, since I've gotten to the level emotionally and everything else in terms of confidence and everything and knowledge, I feel it's my obligation, um, honestly, uh, between myself and my, and my personal time, that I, I, I want to try and help people get to that same level because I feel like I have been gifted um, with the ability to do things like I'm doing. And if I didn't, and it didn't assist other people, not to try to sound self-aggrandizing, I'm not trying to do that. I'm saying I feel that I have to. It's a, it's a compulsion. It's a need to do that uh, because I can't stand... Natasha, when I see people that have been destroyed, like you said, this, you said it perfectly because it, it's all of us. Uh, as a matter yeah, of fact, and, quickly, and I, I, I could have walked away with my own problem and just, like I said, file it in the, you know, this is over with category. But having heard other people's stories about this same judge and what she had done to, to their families, uh, that's what motivated me. That's that their their stories were far worse, and I said, "Oh no, no, yeah. you know." So yeah. anyway, but yeah, that's she, true. She, mm -hmm. she um, it's funny because you applaud me for some of my achievements in as an actress in television and Hollywood and everything. But when I was in uh, Judge Sharon Guffey's courtroom, she actually rolled her eyes several times three times, uh, and looked at a uh, person at the stand, and she said, she leaned over, and she rolled her eyes, and she said, you know she's an actress, right? Uh, Jay, <laughs> Natasha, I'm sorry, Jay, real quickly, Jay, haven't we heard that before? We've had other people, and that's a, something I've heard mm -hmm. before where you think that it would yep. help to show your professionalism and your ability to, to achieve certain things, and it's actually used against you. And you see yeah, that yeah. we, I don't know from who, Jay, we'll have to remember. I know we've heard uh, that before. Patricia we Mee Thompson. Was it Patty yeah. Thompson? It may have, it very Patty well, Thompson, I think yeah. you're right about that. Um, the the well, same not, sort of thing was used. Well, mm -hmm. not only that was used, but um, she went further to um, write it down in my summary of, my, before she submitted my parenting plan, there was a summary attached to it of the hearings, and she mm -hmm. wrote on it, Quote, unquote, she wrote, parents are actors whose testimonies seem scripted at best. Hmm. Unquote. Wow, that's I mean, funny. That's, uh, that's such a convenient, that's a convenient out, isn't it, Jay? <laughs> yeah. Aren't judges well, actors you know what? I, court? I, I accepted <laughs> that as a total um, discrimination against my occupation. I mean, what did she think? I was there pretending to be on an episode of Law and Order or something? Well, you know, well, it's kind of <laughs> funny. you know, it's funny too. It and maybe think too, uh, uh, Your Honor. Uh, you know, so and so is an auto mechanic. He has the ability to fix this car at any time and take the child. I think he's full of it. He's a mechanic. He's look it doesn't even make any sense. Yeah, it, what, the exactly. one that has nothing to do with the other. That's exactly. She shouldn't. She shouldn't have said it. She shouldn't have rolled her eyes, and she shouldn't have written it down. But that's just one example of, you know, she had no business. Yeah. It's it's called impropriety, and she she is yeah. she she uh, underestimated me by a by huge huge amount. She thought yeah, well, I was some like little some actress. <laughs> she thought I was some little actress and beauty queen from Hollywood, and that I would just, you know, she could abuse me, and um, mm -hmm. that ain't going to happen. Now she's going to hear back from me. 
you know, it's like I'm angry and I'm going to stand up. What is that movie? You know, I'm angry and I can't take it anymore. <laughs> right. I, 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 I love it. You know, and I say all the time, Jake, with Lee, the, the best quote unquote weapon you have is people underestimating you. It really is. Uh, it's the best thing in the world. That's how you hit them with that right cross when they're not, they don't even expect it and they're down. You know, I, that's yeah, that's I, love, I love your attitude. It's right up my alley. Keep going. Yeah, well, she grossly <laughs> underestimated me, grossly. Like, uh, I'll tell you another thing. <laughs> yes. that she, she ordered me in the parenting poem. She ordered me, quote, unquote, this is in writing, on, an, an assigned on my final parenting plan. It says, mother is not to speak Serbian to child in front of non, in the presence of non-speakers, and mother uh. is to assure that the child does not speak to mother in Serbian in the presence of non-speakers, unquote. Really? Wow. Seriously? <laughs> Seriously? What you worried about? Yeah, exactly. What is that? I don't even. <laughs> yeah. hey, I don't know what intentions, right bad intentions. Right. Yeah, I can't believe some people would have the, the, the so even write that down is amazing. Yeah, I know. <laughs> she even wrote that down. And I'm thinking, okay. First of all, I should be patted on the back because I have taught my child how to speak the Serbian language <laughs> since she was born. Uh, so I should be um, complimented for making her bilingual by the age of five, you know? Um, yeah, Natasha, you, you're to be yes? penalized for making sure your child is more rounded than the average. That's a, that's near to be penalized for that, I guess, huh? Exactly. And you know what? <laughs> what, she has, what she has done is she unconstitutionally took away order denied me and my daughter the freedom of speech the freedom mm -hmm. of expression and she also discriminated against my national origin my language mm -hmm. and my culture that's what she Absolutely. did with that one sentence and it just shows her entire um, attitude towards me and and my case um, and yeah. the, uh, so that's another thing she did and then um, the first day of hearing when she didn't even hear about me, uh, she didn't hear from me, uh, she states at the end of the first day of hearing, she says, if you don't know how to parent your child, I'm going to put her in foster care and take her away from both of you. Really? Wow. Huh? Like, I was there for a custody and, and a parenting plan, and she's threatening my parental rights. Uh, yeah. There was no cause or reason for her to threaten my parental rights because there was no um, concern for any parent's uh, abilities to parent. Nor, I, nor, nor were you there I, for a fitness hearing sure. of both parents either. And, and here's the thing. I, I got this from... Melissa Martin, I'm going to thank her for that. Uh, but 42 USC 12203 states, protecting advocates against any and all retaliation, coercion, threats, and intimidation, specifically stating it shall be unlawful to coerce, intimidate, threaten, or interfere with any individual in an exercise or enjoyment of or on account of of his or her having exercised or enjoyed, uh, I'm going to go on here because it's very, very long, um, but basically it, it's, it's protecting your rights, and I, I want to point that one out to you, and I'll give that to, to you later, but uh, obviously that's one that you can bring up is, is to say, hey, look, and it's very long, so I won't read the whole thing, but 42 USC 12203, and I want to uh, go on here a little bit as well, because I'm very familiar with the area that you, you live in. I've been there to uh, Franklin, Tennessee. I know that Amy Grant lives there. I know that, you know, Stephen Curtis Chapman, some of those people uh, obviously live in that area. So I'm very familiar with it. Um, we have heard a lot of you know, from other celebrities who have also gone through these family court situations, such as Lita Ford, Jason Patrick, Alec Baldwin, uh, many others. Uh, is there a hope possibly uh, by you speaking out that maybe we can get some more celebrities on board that would really, uh, try, you know, try and jumpstart this uh, to get it in the public eye? 
Uh, well, uh, I know that all those celebrities and especially the people in the country music business live out here. They're probably right within, you know, five mile radius of, of my house. But I don't know them personally, but I'm sure that we can contact them and ask them um, to participate in this kind of discussion and to bring awareness to their situation because um, um, it's, it seems like when people get together, we're so united and we have a, a much stronger and louder voice than when you're trying to do something individually. Um, mm-hmm. So... You know, I, I hope that there's a chance of that, and I hope somebody else will speak up, too. Absolutely. I'm, Absolutely. I'm actually okay. interested in that um, U.S. code as well, because, um, uh, Natasha, I don't know if, I've, um, if you've heard before, but um, my husband was actually last month by uh, Judge Kimberly Campbell in, or I'm sorry, by Judge uh, Laura Lee Weston in Pasco County, Florida, was threatened to have his time-sharing withheld uh, because of my advocacy and um, disparaging comments against her biased rulings in the family court system. She actually looked at my husband uh, with quite disgust, shook his head, and said, uh, if you want to keep posting, then I will take time sharing from him. So time going on. Oh, yeah, and retaliation. I'm sorry? Yes, retaliation and just uh, for no reason. You're you're getting punished as a parent for no reason. I think the reason is that they want to put your child in foster care so that they can get some funds, you know, yeah. follow the money. But on, yeah. another thing this, this judge did to me is uh, after the very first day of hearing, exactly when she um, threatened my parental right, she also stated, after not hearing from me, mind you, heard nothing about my case from me, she states, one of the parents, and this is quote unquote, I've memorized it, because it's been going through my head for for over a year now, Uh, one of the parents has to move out. I don't care which one it is. Toss a coin if you have to. But uh, one of you needs to move out. If you can't decide, then just call me and I'll decide, period. (laughs) Really? Wow. Now, I'm going to tell you a few things about that scenario. Number one, this judge does not have the right to uh, uh, jurisdiction to throw any parent out of their home. Uh That's in another court. I'm, I'm just standing in front of her in juvenile court. The issues at hand are only child custody and child parental plan, nothing else. There's no other uh, issue before her. So the second thing is she doesn't have the authority to make such a ruling to vacate either person out and to make such an order or demand. Uh So uh, what happens is neither of us wanted to move out of the house. Now, i got to add to the story that the house that I lived in was over 5,000 square feet with a a mother-in-law suite, which had a full kitchen, full bathroom, and and a living room, and a bedroom with it. So it's like another apartment, right? Uh Uh, So it was a, it's a huge house with separate entrances. um, And I own the house, and I paid for the house. Uh, right. I paid, I, I own the house and I paid for it. So uh, we didn't want to leave the house, neither um, the father nor I. Mm-hmm. So somehow uh, the judge just filed an order and I got it through an email. I just got, I was aware through an email that mother is to vacate her home immediately. Immediately. Unquote, wow. and that's it. And it said also at the top of the page, it says, I'm going to read it to you because I think I have it. Um, it says, like, this matter came to be heard before me on March 14th, 2016. Um, here it is. Before the Honorable uh, Sharon Guffey, Judge of Juvenile Court of Williamson County, Tennessee, upon proof introduced in the entire record, the court finds that um, 
the parties and council cannot agree as to who should vacate the family residence, and two, Natasha Pavlovich, the mother, should vacate the family residence immediately. And she signed it. Oh. So I had like a few minutes to gather what little clothes that I could think of at the moment. You know, when you're in shock, you're not even thinking. And the Mm -hmm. next thing is I had to get clothes for my daughter. And the third Mm -hmm. thing is I have a, we have a dog too. And another thing is I have no family in Tennessee. So here I was homeless in a matter of 20 minutes. I was on the street homeless. I mean, yes, I, yes. Was, I, I did not know what hit me, how it happened, and I couldn't even explain it. So mm-hmm. what, what is important here is not only that the judge not have jurisdiction and, and the authority, but she also did not provide me with due process. So this order yeah. that was signed by her, which vacated me, it says this matter came to be heard uh, on March 14th. It was not mm-hmm. heard in front of her at all. And uh, right. upon proof introduced in the entire record, what proof? There was no proof introduced. There was no hearing. There was no due process. She tossed right. a coin and decided to vacate me and make me, my daughter, and my dog homeless. And that's right. exactly what happened to me. For th- more than three months, I was homeless. Mm-hmm. Natasha, I can I can absolutely sympathize with you 100% because I was in the same boat as you. Um, I I was given on an order of protection based on mental cruelty, told that I had uh, uh, had to go to my home with the police, pick up only my clothes and my toiletry, and I was out of the house. Uh, as a result maybe a year later after trying to get into an apartment and still pay uh, on the child support order, I became homeless as well, lived on a park bench for two years. So I understand exactly what you're talking about. 100%. Oh, it, you know, uh, thank you for understanding. And I'm sorry you went through that. I, I was horrified. I mean, I felt like, okay, I've accomplished a lot in my life. I was in the Miss Universe pageant. I was representing a whole country I, I was educated from UCLA. Like, how did I end up homeless? Like, from <laughs> homeless. one judge. And Natasha, you know we can definitely. Uh, we can. I I'm sorry, it's but you know we can definitely feel it. Uh, I've been there too. Where you, I'm an ex police officer. They, they don't. It doesn't matter. I'm a, I was in the same spot and going. Wow, how did I get here? I'm educated, mm-hmm. not even close to where you are, but been in a hotel room and even in my car. You know, wondering how I was going to eat years ago and going, how did I get, how did I get here from there? So mm-hmm. <laughs> thank you for giving us yeah. another voice. I apologize well, for interrupting uh, you. What she, what, and I, t- I even called up shelters and I said, look, you know, the judge vacated me out of my house and I have a dog and a daughter and, you know, she's five and I need help. I need help. Mm-hmm. I don't have anywhere to go. I don't have any money to stay at a hotel. What, I don't have any family. And you know what? They wouldn't take me because I was a homeowner. I didn't qualify Mm -hmm. to be at a shelter since I owned a home. And the fact that I said that a judge ordered me to vacate put in their mind, well, I must have deserved it, you know. Um, Mm -hmm. So it was not as difficult with me by myself. And there were days that I did not sleep in my car. But when I got my daughter... I had to take her from one church member's couch to another church member's, you know, extra bedroom to a hotel, you know. So she had no consideration for the inconsistency and the the uh, instability that it caused my daughter. She had no best interest for my daughter. And she did this illegally, and I'm not going to stop till somebody recognizes and she gets impeached, disbarred, and probably apologized to everybody who's Serbian and my daughter and the world, you know, for all of her horrible abuse of the power uh, that she contains, you know. 
Anyway, yeah, absolutely. I haven't even told you uh, half of it, but those are just some of the things that come to me immediately that that is so wrong. Mm-hmm. And I, I know that Kirk was bringing this up in Kirk's Law Corner, so I'm going to bring this up to you as, as well. Um, when a judge steps out of their jurisdiction, um, you can use um, USC uh, 242 deprivation of rights under the color of law, and in that very last sentence, uh, it basically describes what is the penalty for that. And it is treason, and it says specifically, you may be sentenced to death. Now, if that doesn't start making judges start quaking their boots, I don't know what will. Um, because honestly, what we have in this country is we have, uh, and I've talked about this several times, where we have African Americans who have fought for their rights and, and have gained it, uh, hopefully. Uh, you've got the LGBT community who has fought for their rights and gained it, but we don't have equal rights for parents in this country. What is wrong with this? And, and it boils down to the fact of, yes, they're going after this Title IV money from the Social Security Act. It was never meant for that. That's not what this Social Security uh, program was meant for. It was meant for the disabled and the elderly. It was never meant for that. So what ends up happening is we draw from that, and then we sit back and we go, where did all of the money go? Because we're running out of retirement from Social Security. What, what are we going to do? Well, this system can correct itself, and we found out that it can correct itself with one signature, one stroke of the pen, one stroke of the pen, and it would only take Donald Trump signing an executive order ending Title IV. That's all it would take. Uh, well, you know, Connie Regulie has, has gone on a campaign of, uh, mm -hmm. uh, I even volunteered to place uh, her literature in envelopes and send it off. Uh, there was a lot of people vo volunteering the information, and we sent thousands of, um, of letters to Donald Trump from all over the country. Uh, so mm -hmm. she, you know, she has been trying to do that, but eventually we will get his... Um, attention and I believe that it will happen if we just keep at it. If he knows Absolutely. about it, he will he will take care of it. I, bu I believe yes, that I believe so mm -hmm. And I think it's key. just getting to key. him getting and making him aware. Yeah, I'm sorry, bud. I'm sorry, Jay. I said persistence is key, right, Jay? Persistence. Yes, they persist Absolutely. They consistent consistent and persistent. Yes. Yeah, never. I, I actually was one of those as well with you, Natasha. I was uh, I was stuffing envelopes and letters uh, right along with you, helping out in that because I thought it was such an important thing. Um, because if if we can actually just get the ear of the president for if I I tell you this, if I had the ear of the president, he probably wouldn't want me to have his ear because you know it might get bitten off like Mike Tyson fight because. Honestly, I would give him so much of an earful <laughs> because of all of this stuff. I've seen uh, so many people go through this. I've seen so many suicides because of this. We've got to take action. This is our time to take action. And it may never come, hopefully it comes in our lifetime, but it may never come in our lifetime. But what, what this is all about is making sure that our children never have to go through this like we have. Yeah. Um, or anybody, and, and any I other family. You. Uh, well, thank you, but I, I feel that it could take place sooner. The stronger mm -hmm. we we uh, are together and united, and the more mm -hmm. we grab the media and the news and our voices, the faster it will come. So I do believe that this can be brought to the attention of President Trump, and I believe that it could be um, reformed. Just yeah, that people have to get together. So this is one step for us to be talking, to be on the uh, social media and everything. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. One of, uh, I met with a representative in, in my local area um, one day and to discuss, you know, uh, equal time sharing legislation and, and passing it. And the one thing he, he said that will always stick out to me is 
if you want something like that passed, you need to get the women vote. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's amazing, one, that he would feel comfortable telling me that, uh, and two, that that's what we have to resort to in this world, that women have risen to um, such a uh, high power that that's the only way we get things passed. And three, in this world where we we as women, and, and I don't include myself in that, um, uh, want equality, we don't want equality, we want convenient equality. Um, so that, that was pretty um, awakening for me. You know, I, but mm-hmm. I am with you. I do believe that um, equal time sharing and the restoration of our parental rights um, will be will be passed individually in individual states um, upcoming at, at a faster rate than, than say, 10, 15 years ago. I, I pray when our new governor comes in in 2019, that's one of the first legislative changes that takes place. Um, Illinois is on the brink. Kentucky just passed mm-hmm. it. Missouri is on the way. Uh, Nebraska is not far behind. Um, Alabama, with with our great Melissa Isaac, she, you know, she's coming along, too. Um, so so it's catching on. We just have to stay um Stay the path, you know, stay the righteous path. Yeah, and uh, at that hearing I was at at the Nashville, at the Tennessee legislature, uh, uh, May Beavers was present, and she is a big, she was an advocate for a reform for the Judicial uh, Disciplinary Committee. So I'm hoping uh, that we have an ally in her, and I hope that, I think she's running for governor, so I hope that that will happen as well. So, you know. Yeah, we're going yeah, to have to set the numbers and allies. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I've just begun to draw attention to this. I've been organizing myself and my troops, um, and I'm going to go big. I I hope to make this incident with uh, Sharon Guffey uh, national mm-hmm. and international awakening, and uh, I'm going to ask all my fellow Serbians throughout the world. Uh, to chime in and let her know what they think about her forbidding me to speak Serbian to my daughter and my daughter to me. Um, I'm gonna mm-hmm. I'm gonna ask their opinion and I'm going to go uh, use all the social media and all my um, previous contacts in the media and I'm gonna blow this thing up. This is just a yeah. pre pre explosion. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. And, and Natasha the, and Jesse, first thing I was thinking is I, I wouldn't want to be in this lady's crosshairs. I'll tell you that. See her good oh, side. She seems re- side. She's relentless. I love it. That's what we need, Jay and Jesse. That's yeah. and, and Natasha, I applaud you because. And I've talked to many people uh, privately, and I know Jay and Jesse have. I'm quite sure about this. And honestly, it's about uh, being very vocal and in a smart way. And, and you've got to be loud. Uh, unfortunately, mm-hmm. that's the way you have to be um, because. Uh, the system will try and cut you down and get you to a level where we've all been at, uh, unfortunately. Mm-hmm. So uh, it, it takes things like this and people like you, Natasha, doing what you're doing to end the, this abuse overall. That's, that's how you uh, do it. You're, you're allowed to say no more. You're gonna, you're gonna, thank you, but you're going to see what's coming. You just got to uh, keep in touch, and, uh, and you'll see how it's going to unravel. It's not well, going to yeah, be pretty. Well, we're definitely going to stay in touch, and, and I'm going to finish my shelter, so when the bomb does go off, I'll have some, some place to go. Uh, so, <laughs> I, I, thank you. Yeah, hey, yeah. Hey, I'm, I'm I've looking seen her work acting as well. I, I would be afraid of her as well, too. You know. Yeah, the, there's no <laughs> lack of intelligence or intellectual fortitude, so to speak, there. No question. Now, yeah. you'll be hearing from me real soon, uh, uh, not too far off. You'll be seeing me. I, I want to make this case go viral, but I want to start mm-hmm. a movement to show that if everybody does the same thing I'm doing, they could make a change. So she's going to be our little yeah. poster child face for this, the beginning of this movement. Mm-hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Well, we're, we're 100% behind you. Anything we can do to help you out, definitely we will. Um, Absolutely. Now, I know, uh, you know, you've worked with Connie. Uh, you even, you know, like you said, stepped in as a surrogate for her with the uh, uh, Judicial Review Board there. Now, what are some of the, I- I'm just curious as to what the Judicial Review Board uh, would have even 
stated at all. Um, uh, because it was, obviously... It was a- well, it yeah. was a meeting uh, to decide whether that whole agency should be done away with or not. That's what the legislature mm-hmm. was voting on. Oh, and okay. I did not go as a surrogate for Connie or an agent. I went okay. because I heard about it, and I wanted to speak up. Now, prior okay. to going to the legislative board, I did go to the Williamson County Commission, and I spoke up against Judge Sharon Guffey and the injustices in front of all her peers and the people that hired her and in front of her. When I saw her walk in, it changed my entire, uh, like, you know, I don't get nervous on set of Hollywood, but when she sat down and walked in, I was like, oh, gosh, now i got to talk in front of her. It made me a little nervous, uh, but I did it, and I have it on video. Um, I'm going to be reposting that soon. Um, and, uh, so this wasn't the first time I went out and publicly spoke against her. So when, when I went to this Tennessee legislature, uh, I went to just let them know that the, uh, judicial disciplinary committee is, in, is ineffective and they should do away with it and they should, uh, go back to another form of, um, filing complaints because, Judges judging other judges is just ineffective. It doesn't work. They're biased, uh-huh. and they're, they're and it, it was so apparent to me just be, by the video that um, Chris Kraft he he thinks that when people complain about judges in family court, they're complaining about or other courts, they're complaining about, hey, you know, this judge look looks at me real mean or. I didn't like what she gave me on the order. No, no, no. It's I don't like what I got. I don't agree with my order, but it's well beyond that. It's about the conduct and illegal uh, activities of this judge. So I know exactly yeah. what I'm trying to do. He, it's not about some people who are disgruntled and complaining about bologna sandwiches in, you know, at the courthouse or something. Yeah, I completely agree with you. I, I well, think that it. We're, we're talking about that. We're talking about uh, if you disagree with a judge and you try and turn them into a judicial review board, which I've done uh, in the past, I actually got the judge taken off of my case completely and she can't even rule on any case. And it was blatantly due to the fact that there's been no due process of the law. Uh, they're not even hearing the complaint. They believe that they have jurisdiction just because you file paperwork. No, that does not give them jurisdiction. So yeah. honestly, it, it really comes down to the fact that we almost need to blow these courts completely out of the water and say, no more. Let's get back to common law. Let's go yeah. back to what makes sense. Um, yeah, and how about, you know, when you go to court in family court, well, if you go to criminal court, they said you have the right to remain silent, you have this right, you have that mm-hmm. right. When you go into family court, they the, the judge should tell you, you have a right to be a parent. You have parental rights. You have the right, right. to uh, or, or, or rebuttal. You have the this right. You have that right. They should also have a jury. Why should mm-hmm. one chick, why should one chick who's sitting up there in a black robe uh, pretend like she has a psycho a degree in psychology, child development, and life. You know why? Right. It should be a, right. a, a a couple of judges or or a jury to evaluate the best interest of the child, not one person who's who says toss a coin. You know, However, or it should just be equal. That's it. It should just mm-hmm. be equal. Even in the cases of these alleged domestic violence, you know, cases and blah, 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 the majority of them are are false. You know, it should Mm -hmm. be equal. And especially when, you know, you have situations of of abuse when the children aren't even involved. If we start it equal, we at least have, a a, you know, a start. (laughs) From this point on, parents are, are forced to prove themselves innocent of nothing. Right. Yeah. Yeah, well, I, I agree with that. From because... the start, right? It's adversarial from the start. You, they, they, they don't. It, exactly. As you said, Jesse, it should be an equal playing field. It shouldn't be instantly okay. One's you know, quote unquote, better than the other. Let's see how we can totally discredit one and destroy them in every way possible. 
and actually put the child much of the time with the uh, more confrontational parent, the more uh, parent that is is the quote unquote troublemaker. And I believe going back quickly, uh, Natasha, to something you said about uh, the belief, you know, the gentleman I believe was under the belief that it was just kind of uh, menial complaints and things like that. I'm under the belief they do know, and I, I think what they try and do, their first quote unquote weapon is to baffle you with BS and frustrate you to the point where you just go away. Yeah, and, you know, and I have think you they, ever seen uh, you know, a? I'm sorry, have you ever seen a judicial complaint form? You have to, you can't just put down like, you know, like a regular right. person, all the stuff that happened to you. You have to look up the canon. You have to write down the number of what what the judge was in, you know, in uh, doing illegally. You know, you have to, you have to take a English lit, um, you have to get a degree in, in, a, in English literature or law before you even submit the darn complaint, you know? It's so, uh, like if you put, oh, the judge, you know, at, rolled her eyes and acted this way, that's insufficient. You have to write down, the judge was guilty of being biased against me because of this and this. I mean, it's, it's an essay. And how many people yeah. in their emotional time where they're not, they don't even have a place to sleep can even think? I I don't remember... Right. When I was going through all this, if if what my name was or where I was, and I also mm -hmm. wanted to say that Connie did not represent me in my case. I only was fortunate enough to meet Connie after uh, my case with this this issue. So Connie is mm -hmm. representing me now, but she had nothing to do. Had I had Connie, I would have had things differently. You know, she would have stood right. up and said, "Wait a minute, you don't have any jurisdiction. You don't." But, you know, my former attorneys, when I said, what is it, what's wrong with you? I need a place to stay. You know, I almost wanted to say, are you going to have me stay at your house? You know, because no, right, right. They, weren't, they weren't doing anything to help me. And I was in their office like every other day going, guys, you know, you got to do something. I'm out of my house. I have no place yeah. to go. I'm going to get my child. And right. you know what my previous lawyer said to me? She said, She'd never been in front of this judge before, and she said, I don't want to step on her toes. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I've heard that well, before, too. Yeah, and, yeah, yeah and definitely. After, you don't want to, yeah. After, after the fact that my parenting plan was established, so after a month that it was solid and I filed an appeal, um, I actually went back to my house because it was not written in the final order that I have to stay out of my house forever. I mean, the, all all previous orders are are um, ineffective with, with the following the final order. So right. I waited for thirty days, and I I I went back to my house. So then mm -hmm. the father files another petition with the same judge to evict me again, and in the wow. court with. A 15-minute proceeding, my my then lawyer says, uh, and she wrote it down, she says, you know, you made this order, you didn't have authority, you didn't have jurisdiction, and you made it without due process. That's written in her um, response to the petition, and she stated that in court. Well, mm -hmm. where, were, where, where were her, you know what, uh, three, three and a half months ago, to, why didn't she say that prior? I'll tell you why. Right. Because she's going to be in front of that judge again, and she's part of the community. Right. So mm -hmm. I right. didn't matter. If it would have been Connie, yep. she would have stated that in court right then and there. So, um, mm -hmm. and, I, and you know what this judge said that day in that 15-minute hearing? She said, I have this all on, on video and audio tape from the court, which I had a very hard time uh, getting because the judge denied me this court video. I asked wow. for it, and I asked for it three times, and she denied it to me. I had the denials, and um, wow. the reason she denied it is because she didn't want me to expose her and to see what she had said on it. She states on it, she goes, well, it was my intention to write it in the final order. Can you imagine? It was her intention to keep me out of the house forever. Yeah, like, yeah, it sure and, was. And, and when... Uh, my former attorney stated to her the laws, she, she told the opposing attorney, she said, 
Well, you know, you, I think what you want to file is Rule 61. Like, mm. oh, I think it's Rule 61, but she was telling the opposing counsel of what they should file so that she gets <laughs> her way. Wow. So, and, 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 uh, wow. And I, yeah, I have this on audio videotape. I'm going to plaster it on the on the video so you guys can all yeah. view what I'm telling you. Oh yeah, yeah. multiple. Yeah, times. that's yeah. that's leading the opposing counsel. Absolutely. Quickly, I was yeah, I, before we go. I was going to say you'd think that your uh, former attorney or these attorneys out there, Jay and Natasha and Jesse, not only would feel not necessarily an ethical obligation, but a moral obligation maybe to let you stay with them, as you mentioned earlier, Natasha, since you're probably the one who put the addition on the house that they are sleeping in. Hey, at you least let me sleep in the addition I paid for. And while you're doing <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Absolutely. Exactly. Yeah, and exactly. I know our time has kind of flown okay. by and, you know, excuse the aviatrix joke there, obviously. <laughs> but um, our time has kind of run out for this evening, but we want to thank you absolutely for coming on. Is there anything you want to promote before before we go? Um, I just, um, I'm going to um, make a stand com coming up soon, uh, and then I'll have you posted, uh, if you can post it on your websites and pass it down, and let's, let's make the domino effect happen and help Connie in the cause and help all the people that are suffering, all the families under whoever uh, in the whole nation. That's what my goal is. So uh, I'm, just, I'm just warming up uh, right now. <laughs> just getting to what, and I'll, I, before yeah. I go to Jesse, I also want to thank you. I want to thank you too, Natasha. It has flown by. And I'll say in terms of anything that you want to uh, try and help push, I've got to say Ted Fogg, our, Ted, our own Ted Fogg here from Far From Normal is amazing in terms of marketing and pushing mm -hmm. things so if you're not friends with him on facebook it would behoove you to do so and thank you so much and it's been amazing i know for, i'm sure for jesse too jeff okay well it's my pleasure and uh, thank you guys for having me really yeah. i appreciate it yeah thank, thank you so you. much